Hi, I'm Ralph. As always, bringing the universe down to earth. And in this episode, we're going to look at the discovery of a machine made by the ancient Greeks and lost in a shipwreck that was more complex than any other machine invented for the next one and a half thousand years. It's called the Antikythera mechanism, and it was so advanced it's often been referred to as the first ever computer. Now be a darling, hit the subscribe button, and off we go. This story should start in ancient Greece, but it actually begins while the first big skyscrapers were going up in Chicago and New York, and the Second Boer War was raging in southern Africa. Sponge divers off the coast of the Greek island of Antikythera found a Roman cargo ship on the floor of the Aegean Sea in 1900, and among the priceless antiquities found in the shipwreck was a chunk of corroded bronze and wood, which was pretty much overshadowed by the more glitzy statues, the jewellery and the coins among the wreckage. But after sitting ignored in the National Museum of Archaeology in Athens for a few years, an archaeological examination of this curiosity revealed the outline of intricate cogs. Now, cogs and primitive gear mechanisms had been in existence since the Chinese Zhou Dynasty around 400 BC and in Greek mills from a similar time. But this item was far more exquisite and miniature, more like an early European clock from the 1400s. And this would only make sense if the device had been dropped in the sea in the 15th century and had happened to fall among the shipwreck's treasures, because the statues and the coins and the wine flagons dated the shipwreck to around 60 BC, at least 1,400 years before any technology of this intricacy had been known to exist. Well, it turned out that it was even more sophisticated than that, X-ray studies of the object in the 1950s and 1970s showed even more cogs buried in the corrosion, revealing dozens of miniature gearing mechanisms. Two cogs immediately stood out as they appeared to have 127 and 223 teeth. These two prime numbers stand out to astronomers and mathematicians as being important in Greek astronomy for charting the movement of the planets and the moon. A former curator of mechanical engineering at the London Science Museum called Michael Wright used these x-rays to build a replica of the cogs. Some of the x-rays showed what looked like a pin and slot mechanism inside some of the cogs, which would increase and lower the speed of these cogs as they turned to act as though those round cogs were actually elliptical. An engineering innovation that again would appear to come from at least a thousand years later. These ellipse simulating cogs confirmed that this was modelling the elliptical movement of the Sun, the Moon and the five known planets referred to by the Greeks as wandering stars Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter and Saturn with the Earth not being represented as the Earth would sit unmoving in the centre of the pre-Ptolemaic Greek theory of planetary movements rather than the Sun being at the centre. While mechanically it wasn't greatly accurate by today's standards, it was impossible to match the engineering precision we can achieve today, but it was also following the imprecise geocentric solar system model. But mathematically, the motions were accurate to that geocentric model of the solar system to nine decimal places. Mathematically, the ancient Greeks were shit hot. And this mobile planetarium was useful for knowing when to plant crops, hold ceremonies, fight battles, collect debts, debts were payable at full moon in ancient Greece, and knowing when there's enough moonlight to travel at night. There was no need to mass produce these machines because so few people were wealthy enough or powerful enough to need one. Also, bronze is a malleable and recyclable metal that would have been melted down to make something else if the next owner didn't see a need for it. In fact, if it hadn't sunk with the Roman ship, it's likely this would have been melted down and lost forever too. But it wasn't, and in 2008, a more advanced X-ray tomography examination of the mechanism showed the full extent of the surviving gears and a clever lighting technique allowed scholars to better read the ancient Greek text that had been etched into the mechanism itself. A handy manual, if you like. This showed that buried deep in the corroded heart of the mechanism, 
there were likely 50 or 60 gears when working. This makes it a piece of technology more advanced than any machine we'd see made for another one and a half thousand years. This latest examination not only confirmed it as a predictor of solar, lunar and planetary movements, but the 223 teeth on the largest cog made use of Babylonian astronomy and mathematics for predicting both lunar and solar eclipses, partial eclipses, and the colour the moon would be during each future lunar eclipse. We know this for sure because of the corroborating Greek inscriptions that emerged during this examination. Then there were cogs to show the important regional games, including the Olympic Games, and how they fit into these astronomical cycles. So this was not only a machine that looked more like something from the 15th century, but it also came from a concept that we wouldn't see until the 15th century, using the scientific method to systematically and reliably predict the future. Professor Tony Freeth, a member of the 2008 investigation team, called this the first time the human race has created a computer. Almost 1900 years before Thomas Babbage's difference engine, which is widely regarded as the first mechanical computer. So who knows what the Greeks would have been capable of if the golden age of their civilization hadn't come to an end around the time the Antikythera mechanism was being plundered by Roman merchants. To narrow things down further, the text on the mechanism led scholars to believe it was made in the Greek province of Corinth, probably by the Greek astronomer and mathematician Hipparchus, because it makes use of his theories of lunar motion, and because he was pretty much the only person alive at the time known to have the ingenuity to create something so mathematically and astronomically precise and complex. That means it was likely made between 100 and 150 years BC. Now, since the 1970s examinations, there have been a number of attempts to recreate the Antikythera mechanism, most notably Michael Wright, who I mentioned earlier as being instrumental in some of the discoveries of how the mechanism works. But there are also numerous digital simulators on the web that a quick Google search will bring up if you want to find out more about this. But over the next 1400 years after the Antikythera mechanism was made and lost, Byzantium and Arabic astronomers are also known to have made machines that predicted moon phases and astrolabes for modelling the known heavens. These were likely based on less complex Greek machines that survived and which themselves are only known about because they were referred to by the ancient Greek scholar Cicero. But it's interesting that the Byzantine astrolabes centuries into the future were still less intricate machines. We always think of technology as advancing, but until the Renaissance and the scientific revolution, it was common for technology in every civilization to either advance in short spurts or spend long periods stopping altogether or even receding. However, this knowledge now held by the Arabs returned to Europe in the 13th century when the Moors expanded into Southern Europe. And it later became apparent that such gears could help with timekeeping in clocks and are likely what sparked the scientific revolution that followed and created the technological world we enjoy today. So thank you for watching and thanks to viewer Jonathan Zeller for asking us to do a video on the Antikythera mechanism. If you like this video, please do give us a like and subscribe to the channel. You can find links to our fortnightly podcast in the notes below. And why not take a look at one of our other astronomy, science or space videos while you're here?